Nero Spec SK. Um, and I would like to welcome Tian Tromp. He is Chief Sales Officer for Nero Spec SK. Uh, Nero Spec is part of the Schmidt Kranz Group. Uh, that's where the SK comes from and is working on um, uh, communication, automation, and digital mine machine solutions for the mining industry. Welcome, Tian. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for affording us of your time today. Um, thank you for the introductions. So uh, just want to get it full screen. So today I'm going to have a few slides and uh, communicate uh, about communications, automation, and digital mine solutions. Start off uh, from a group point of view. Um, if you look at us as a, as a group, and you look at the vision, we are Neurospec SK's expertise makes mines, machines, miners safer, efficient, more productive through the communications, automation, and digital solutions that we offer. When we look at our mission, we deploy independent mining machine communications control and automation solutions for mines worldwide. We connect machines, creating valuable decision-making insights on demand. We adapt leading edge technologies to the underground mining environment. And as a tech company, we are very passionate um, and experienced and committed to delivering the fourth industrial revolution to mines. Our approach, first off, starts with the fundamental enabler, which is a solid communications medium whether it is Wi-Fi, whether it will be LTE, 4G, 5G, or whether it would be a hybrid solution. We are uh, open to any type of technology that um, we can put underground in order to enable us to get valuable insights from production, um, the production machines, your primary machines, to maintenance, um, knowing when these machines um, are over the service period, knowing what's happening on the actual machine. Um, then, of course, to automation, safety, PDS interventions, speed brake interlock interventions. And then at the end, of course, what is happening with the operations as a general. How we achieve that is through a plethora of hardware that we have. It is our own hardware that we um, uh, manufacture and design. Um, but just to touch on some of them is what you see on your screen at the moment are, are what we call our hub family. Um, these are units that interface with any machine. We are agnostic to OEM. Um, we do the acquisition. We do the control of the machine, um, communications, and we do anything from a single CAN bus controller, which just logs CAN information all the way up to what we call a cyber hub, which is an automation controller that is agnostic to what control software you would like to load on it. If an OEM has got a preferred control uh, uh, software suite that they would like to run, um, this controller is agnostic. It will control the machine you will plug in all the LIDARs, radars, and whatever other uh, sensing technologies you will put onto the machine in order to get to a automate state. And you can then load that software in order to do that. If we look at these hubs and we look at what they enable, um, starting with the approach of safety, we can do the level nine interface, um, MS ISO 21815, um, we have been doing that in South Africa for the last seven years, where we have uh, installed on an a plethora of different OEMs, as well as PDS vendors. We can do driver access control. Um, we can do what we call speed brake interlock. Uh, this is where we set three different speeds for a machine uh, going down a decline, coming up the decline or in a flat surface, as well as speed limiting that we can do with um, uh, BLE beacons in certain areas. Say, for instance, uh, there is an area that is very wet and uh, it is a current ha hazard. We can get all machines to travel at a set speed of 
for argument's sake, three kilometers per hour. If we look at monitoring on the actual machine, we will see that uh, these hubs are all black box recorders. Uh, we have three memory states on these recorders. We have something called FRAM, which is basically the last 24 hours uncorruptible um, uh, gathering of that information. Then we have a secondary onboard uh, memory that gives you about two months of memory. And then we have an SD card that we put onto the machine, uh, onto the hub that gives you about two years of, of information gathered on the machine. And the reason why um, we have the local uh, memory is most mines and a lot of mines don't always have the ability to connect to these machines because they do work um, very deep into these mines. And uh, you don't always have that the communications are keeping up with the face. So when the machines is in that area, they will continue to record the information. However, the moment they get within, um, let's say a Wi-Fi uh, hotspot or an LTE hotspot, um, that information can be opportunistically uploaded um, via this, uh, the NeuroHub and the suite of families. We can do breakware monitoring. It is something that we do in South Africa that we haven't seen um, where we actually, um, measure the, the wet brick uh, assembly on, on the uh, Kessler axles, in, in particular on LHDs, um, as well as other machines. We can do engine monitoring and protection um, monitoring where we look at certain states. We sit with the OEM and the mine where we look at what we would call a high and a high, high state or a low and a low, low state, depending on whether it's a temperature level um, uh, and so forth. So what would happen is the machine would uh, alarm the actual driver on a, a high or a low state, and there will be some form of uh, action that that driver needs to do according to what the change management of this particular uh, and the instructions of that particular um, mine is. However, if, if the machine continues and goes into either a high, high or a low, low state, we do have control of the machine where we can actually park the machine or slow it down to a slower speed in order to drive that machine to a workshop to be repaired or to be looked at. We also do operational exposure monitoring. Um, these uh, devices have two nine degrees of freedom IMUs on them, which basically um, gives you the roll pitch and yaw of the machine. And you can play back that information um, and use it for maybe training or use it to see which operators are, 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 are basically smacking the machines into the sidewall or who, who's, who's spinning. We do tire pressure monitoring. If we look at production, we can see tonnage reporting. Um, we have uh, basically something that we call Neuro Newton, which on an LHD, we know where the bucket is, what is inside the bucket, and with clever BLE tags, we can give you uh, tip counting. We can give you, um, uh, as well as movement reporting, we would know utilization on the machine. We can do digital operator checklets um, on an HMI. We can do dispatch messaging. Um, and then of course, just normal production reporting. Then from an automation side, there's the radio controls. There is the um, semi, uh, uh, sorry, the, the remote controls, the semi-automation, as well as all the way to full, full automation. We currently have two projects running in Germany where we are doing uh, automation. And if we look at the hub from a wireless connectivity point of view, if you walk up to any of these hubs with either a smartphone, uh, a tablet, or a PC, you can connect wirelessly to these hubs and interrogate uh, certain information. Um, however, as I've mentioned earlier, if these hubs come within a Wi-Fi hotspot or an LTE hotspot, it can upload its information um, to surface to be viewed by software suites. Just uh, an, an add-on, these are some of the OEMs. These are not all of them, um, but these are just some of them that we have worked with uh, and over the years where we've had integrations all the way to fully controlling some of the machines 
and in some cases doing speed break interlock and in other cases doing basically the level nine intervention between the PDS vendors on the left. These are some of the PDS vendors that we have worked with. Um, this device uh, supports Modbus, it supports Profibus, it can also do discrete IO. Uh, it supports the level nine MS ISO 21815 protocols and it supports the JF 1939 uh, can so it is very agnostic um, in 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 the way that we have structured this, and any OEM can basically use this. All of the hardware needs to come back, and and maybe maybe I just want to pause there for a second before I go into the software. Um, I'm just showing you very high level. We we don't have a, a a lot of time, so I'm just showing you very high level the controllers that we use. But of course, in order to get to a connected machine you will need in a plethora of um, sensors um, on the machine. And these could be either harnessed or it could be um, put onto a wireless type of technology. Of course, when we say wireless, you will not want to put some safety systems like brakes or something like that on wireless. Uh, it will definitely be only the monitoring side. So if you want to know certain temperatures or certain level states, those you can put onto a BLE wireless system and solution, which is, which is a product that we do have. If we look at software, as I've mentioned, if you walk up to a machine in an underground environment and you have a smart device with you, tablet or phone or PC, you can connect to the machine. Now, there is three software suites that we run from a machine side, uh, standing next to the machine. The one would be the hub control, which is just how we control and set up the actual hubs uh, initially or when there's any type of maintenance. Then we have what we call hub analysis, which is per millisecond data that you are downloading while you're standing next to the machine. This is very handy when you are doing investigations, specifically if you're looking at proximity detection systems and you're looking at incidents, that is when you would use that type of information while you're doing your investigation. Then we have something which we believe um, is, is uh, something that's not out there, not in this state. We have what we call HubSum. We walk up to a machine and within 10 seconds, we get summarized data of the last 91 hours of bucket data. And this can be customized to whatever the particular person or mine would like. If it's a production person, he will see production information. If it is a person that is interested in safety, they would see speed break, uh, over speedy, uh, collision avoidance or proximity detection uh, 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 information of uh, any incidents, if it's a maintenance guy, they will see any specific pressures, levels that that is that has gone outside the set parameters. That is all machine side, underground, it's handy, but you also need that information on surface. We do that via CIMAC. Uh, CIMAC stands for Short Interval Monitoring and Control. Um, it is a software suite that can compare different machines. It can compare different production uh, uh, times. You can go in depth into specific zones. You can go who has overwrite the machine. Um, all of these states can be uh, given to you anywhere, wherever, you know, whether you want it in the cloud or whether it is a server based on the actual mine, um, all, all of this is available. Um, last one, I just wanna pause here before I go uh, on. We are, very open to work with any software suite the mine already maybe have or has decided on. Uh, you do not have to use CIMAC. You can use any other software. We can always take that information and push it to you. We do do that in, in quite a lot of times um, where customers would like something else um, and they, they already have it existing. Don't have to, don't have to use our front end. So um, that is basically me from a talking point of view. I've got a, a connected video, a short video that I'd like to play. Um, please let me know if the voice does not come through. Sound coming through? Yep, coming through, thanks. Thank you, Jürgen. 
Nerospec SK is the purveyor of connected mind tech and has evolved mind technology to be able to implement level 9 intervention controls on any machine, regardless of type or OEM. A fully connected mining machine is something exceptional, and Nerospec SK has been at the forefront of developing a complement of mining machine add-ons to achieve this feat. The Nero Hub is a state-of-the-art proximity detection interface and machine controller. It is the control and information hub that interacts with Nerospec SK SIMAC software to offer rapid insights and enabling mine officials to make quick decisions. With a Nero Hub and a complete complement of Nerospec SK state-of-the-art sensors and actuators, you can dramatically improve mine machine, personnel, and environmental safety. Insights from the completely connected machine help streamline safety, monitoring, maintenance, and connectivity. Looking at the most critical aspect of mine operations, safety. A few of the safety features included are Full level 9 intervention controls are standard with our Nero Hub Driver access control, a machine functional safety system, and a fire suppression interface may all be incorporated, as well as a comprehensive speed brake and limiting interlock. Monitoring mining machines has never been easier with the Nero Hub and its suite of solutions. The Nero Hub acts as a black box recorder and stores up to two years of operational data, allowing you to monitor metrics such as tire pressure, transmission state, temperatures, pressures, brake wear, engine state, fluid levels and flow rates from the data collected. Real-time machine monitoring may be used to assess machine health, operator behavior, and much more. Productivity insights allow decision makers to link up the best machines and operators for the job, as well as offer insight into which machines perform best, allowing for informed future equipment acquisition decisions. This is achievable through tonnage reporting, movement reporting, operator checklists, runtime and utilization, production monitoring, production reporting, and dispatch messaging to mention a few. The Nero Hub collects, stores, and packages all sensory data before sending it to SIMAC via three distinct communication methods. With total underground connectivity solutions, all data is easily accessible and routed to the surface via a wireless access point for SIMAC to interpret in real time. The Nero Hub will push data to the surface for mines with little or no wireless connectivity whenever it is within wireless range. Our machine side infrastructure less solution is the third option. In order to send data to the surface, the Nero Hub data is transmitted to a laptop or Android device which relays the data to the central SIMAC server. The Nero Hub boasts industry-leading OEM and PDS agnostic capabilities that allow it to be deployed on the majority of trackless mining machines, allowing us to boost profits by pumping up your productivity and kitting out your machines with cutting-edge enhanced safety capabilities. For more information visit us at www.sk.nerospec.com Nerospec SK. Connected Mining Works. Thank you very much. Um, that is uh, my presentation. If there's any questions, um, please feel free to to ask. Uh... Thank you very much, um, uh, Tian. I have one question to begin with. Uh, looking at um, looking at mines around the world, uh, how many of them are do have wireless connectivity? underground already or is that you know do you see differences between different continents there's definitely differences to different continents um if we look at uh, australia specifically um they have they they started in the early 2000s putting uh wi you know basically wi-fi connectivity into the underground space if we look at places like south africa africa where i am at um that has ha only happened, I would say, uh, after 2010 in the last 10 years. So it, it does definitely depend uh, per continent. Um, the, the main thing here is that we have connected machines. It's not one machine, it's, it's a fleet. You've got 50, maybe 150, um, maybe 200 machines, and you want to collect data from all of the mach these machines. So you do have to have a high bandwidth, high capacity, either Wi-Fi, um, 4G or 5G network. You know, your, your radio-based uh, technologies of past uh, just don't have the capacity to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks a lot. Uh, and I think we have a question from Jeremy. Um, yeah, look, Tian, again, uh, what you're doing is really exciting. Um, I, I, I wonder, um, and again, I'm, I'm futuristic in my, in my thinking here. Um, sure. the, the, 
the, you, you mentioned uh, application of Industry 4.0. Um, in my my simpler language, it's like how do we get the digital revolution to come and really get traction in in mining? And the the thought that was going through as I was listening to your presentation is the data that you're collecting is just way beyond the human mind's ability to uh, to process. So correct, you you can send all of that stuff up to a screen up in a up in a control yep. room, and you can have people uh, optimizing around a set of data. But they can't possibly yeah. be getting the right answer because there's too much yeah. data. Okay. Correct. And and so that that to me means that in order to 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 really leverage what you're doing, what we need is a a, a growing cadre of people who are able to manage artificial intelligence. That that's where the skill set goes. And yeah. I just wondered whether you'd like to comment on that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's a. Uh... It's a, it's a real life problem because everybody wants big data, but once you've got the big data, what do you do? With it? Yeah. So we have been, for seven years now, we have been putting this data on machines and, and collecting all of this data. Only in the last year and a half, we have started to take the data and um, do what we call uh, edge computing. So if you look at the Neuro Hub, the Nano Hub, and the cyber hub, they have edge computing on them. So that's the reason why we can do that summarized or that op sum data. So that we take this big data and we, we, we put it up in chunk size, bite size, so that you can look at it and it gives you averages. That's the one way how we've done it. But the latest uh, developments that we have in CIMAC is to rather look at the data and tell a user what's wrong at any point in time. So they don't need to look at the data. We set certain parameters, high highs, you know, yeah. uh, low lows, lows, and these pop up and say, you have a problem with this particular machine, it's gonna run out of out of oil, you know, or it's gonna run out of fuel, or 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 the transmission is is above the threshold of the OEM um, of that. So we've started to do that. It is part and parcel of it. It's still a journey. I will not say that we have everything a hundred percent because minds are different as well. Um, you know, uh, some minds use machines and what is important for them is not important for the mind next to them. But we definitely are on the track to do that to a point where it is intuitive, if I can call it that. Yeah. Look, it's a long conversation. Um, and so, um, I, I, uh, Jürgen, I, I'm just going to ask one question to each, to each person because they're all leading to a theme here. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's, it's intended to be helpful to the to the presenters because I think they can find form an alliance where their their enormous skills can actually be leveraged and, and revolutionize yeah. our, our industry. Yeah, I must say that um, I, I really appreciated what uh, Dino had to say um, about the the open protocols. You know, um, mm -hmm. yeah. we are a very agnostic company. We we don't mind where we cut the the pie or how we slice the cake. And uh, it was, it, it, I, I welcome uh, what, what Akinoff was, was saying. So yeah. thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a lot, uh, Jeremy, for your question. And thanks a lot, Tian, for, for your presentation. To find out more, go to www.sk.neurospec.com. Neurospec SK. Connected Mining Works.